Well hello and welcome to Gmodism. We're back with the Gimli Battles. Gmodism. And here we are. The Gimli Battles. This time, Project Broadsword from Scrubus is going to meet the Gimli. Will it meet its destiny or will it create a new destiny by, uh, I don't know, bisecting the Gimli as you do? with a broadsword. This truly looks like a bastard sword. Really big, really thick, really clunky, and very utilitarian. I would love to see some paint slapped on it, even though if it's just another shade of gray. Anyways, otherwise it's looking very intimidating. And you might think these are cram cannons. You're wrong. They are APS. All of them are APS. It's APS. And that's Advanced Projectile System, if you're old. Also known as Advanced Cannons. In any case, let the battle begin. We really got some packed shots here, man. Alright. It's like launching shells, like an archer. What do we have here? We have frag heads, fragmentation, warheads, emergency ejection defuses, and uh, not 100% of the last back part. Maybe it's a timed detonation thing? No, it's not. So, we are raining down fragmentation. The Gimless Lamb is trying to kill some of them, why I almost thought it was some kind of time fuse. But you can see we are trying to just overwhelm the Gimla with a lot of fragmentations, which is probably a really good strategy. Now, I wonder though, oh, we're keeping the Gimla's lasers offline due to the laser trying to shoot these shells down. That's a really good strategy from the Project Broadsword. We can see they are digging through. Gimla has pretty light armor. Thankfully, we have a layer of Era, <clears throat> making not that it makes big big difference, but whatever. How is it looking on the Project Broadsword? It is in the lead, material-wise. It has a lot of hydrofoil. No, not hydrofoil. Yes, hydrofoils by using these rudders here and it has jet engines and azipods spammed all over the place now we need to pause and see if this no these cram shells grazed right on top of it a very good very good luck from the project broadsword unless it may actually be moving up and down to dodge the enemies I don't know if the Gimli is just very lucky with the weather, or if this is the Project Broadsword's natural movement pattern. Here we got one explosion with cram, however, but I think that might have been a decoy cram. Man, the Gimli is down to 87 percentages. It's getting absolutely shredded with frags. Man, we don't have much barrels left for most, most of those cram cannons. Good we are at close range for the Gimli, because otherwise it would have no chance of survival. We are going to see though if it has a chance of survival or not. And I think we should be doing that by following this cram shell. Because I do believe this is a hit. It is not a hit. However, its friend... That's not, that's, that, that's different. That's it. But it didn't do much damage. It detonated in an area where there is not much to kill. <clears throat> Bam, these shells are just flying in here and they're really keeping the Gimless lasers busy. Well, this is one of those ultimate APS vs cram showdown. The crams are of course shedding off a lot of armor, but man, look at this. This is so much spaced and thick armor to really protect itself against those cram shells. Look like the Project Broadsword 
being pretty fast as well, are going to go back on the back side of the game they are. Seems to be really hard to disable these guns. I just love this little radar tracker decoy looking and rotating up there. It just adds so much. <clears throat> 70% it's looking pretty bad for the Gimla here. We had of course a lot of fuel which has started to burn after the update I do believe the Gimla is probably having more than one internal fire Ooh, they're, they're, I think they're aiming for the AI area That is crazy Only two minutes in in the battle and the Gimle is looking pretty darn sad. Where did we even hit with the pack? I didn't see that. <clears throat> All right. It doesn't do much of an attempt at even targeting the crams, but it doesn't matter much. Keeping the laser offline is doing a pretty good job itself, but now it seems that we got one turret detections is off. It's really crammed with APS turrets here. It's crazy. I wonder if we're getting even the uh, mortars popping down or not. The thunderous sound of 500mm I think it is. If I know my APS sounds. Wondering like does this do any that no we have so thick armor here even though it penetrates a bit It's it's aiming the wrong places We're really we really need to be super lucky in order to take out these turrets because we are well armored here We're super well armored and the broadsword is a two-sider so I do think it will switch its uh, side towards the enemy if it uh, is too damaged too. It almost looks like the gameless crams are not penetrating deep enough, which is very rare. Look at that damage, man. The AI is about the only thing that's not dead. Our cram cannons just can't reach it. The broadsword has been able to move behind the Gimle, which is absolutely genius. That is fantastic. The cram cannons, they're, they're trying as hard as they can, but not even a third of the broadsword's cannons seems to be disabled yet. Yeah, that's a good punch for some good old gunpowder-based frag. 59% Gimle is dying. We are behind in health a lot. And we are even getting stalked from behind by the broadsword. Which is uh, trying to cut off our rear by now. It even ace for the general AI area. Oh, you can see here. We got an internal explosion. The engine started to burn. Which means explosion in like very few seconds. It's looking bleak for the game lab, at least the first round. We'll see if this changes the upcoming round. Or not. We didn't get the explosion I promised. Well. Anyways. The Gimla lost, so let's move on to the next round. There we have it. Round two, let's go. We're gonna... Stay with the initial swarm here, just to see what happens. Unfortunately, the Gimli can can't use its diff flags to take these out. But the initial swarm is of course dealt with by the lambs, but man, that material is better spent on the laser. Against the Project Broadsword, I believe that 
having uh, having uh, <clears throat> uh, lambs is uh, a really bad thing. The sh both of the shots bounced off. Are you kidding me? That's some good luck for the broadsword there. Its extreme speed and agility just makes sure. Oh, though, that's one turret going down. Those have really thin turret necks here. I do believe it uh, depends a lot on where and how the crams hit. I think it looks like the Project Broadsword is aiming on specific points for a long time. So it's a lot up to if it's aiming at a place that makes a big difference or not. Another shell bounced. We probably have uh, shields on this thing maybe? Not sure, I can't see them. Oh yes, now I saw them. We have shields, deflecting shots. Good choice from the broadsword. Bad news for the Gimla, of course. Pretty good hit with that cram shell. But there are so many turrets. We'll have to hit a lot of really good shells to not die. Yeah. Even though we're hitting a lot of good shots, there are so many other cram shells missing and so many turrets surviving. Oh, that's one turret down though. I jinxed it. With not the laser helping here, it's a really, really bad news for the Gimla. It really needs its lasers. Just not worth it to spend it on taking out those uh, fragmentation rounds popping in here. Wow. They are so close of starting a fire here. The broadsword is down to 87 percentages. Like, looks like we landed a good hit here because now another turret is missing. The shells keep popping in. But too many turrets are still alive. Now the broadsword is aiming for the superstructure. Which might be a good thing for it. Because I think if it can take down the tracking turret. The gimlet's accuracy will be worse. But uh, of course. Shooting at the cram turrets is probably a better idea. Anyways. I want to see what the Arcubalista Invictus can do. Oh. Now we kind of lost it, but it won't... Maybe it died here. I think it died here. Well, didn't reach anything important, it seems like. But the Gimli is down to 78 percentages. So it's looking like the broadsword has a good chance of winning this. Man, those mortar crams thought, almost thought they would pop in to save the day. But alas, they will not. It's only 10% difference. Yeah, it, uh, it, it depends a lot on lucky shots. But I do really think that the Project Broadsword is probably gonna win this. You can see it's pounding on happily still. And the Gimli is only landing the occasional cram shot now because I do believe that basically all of its cram systems are pretty much very damaged by now. Look at that. Can't believe this cram is still firing. 3D cram, yay. Divigoletta is still blasting on. It's a good fighter. This cram is 
completely out of its range. Gimli is still pretty quick, but man, it's a good idea of the broadsword of trying to be behind it. If it's trying, but it's lo it looks like it's trying to do that. I think the Arcubalista system shot some blocks underwater, because do remember that those snipers is shooting mostly for blocks underwater. So the, the broadsword is actually not keeping a lot of its uh, bulk underwater, which might be a problem when it comes to fire, but it already solved the laser situation, so it's fine for it. However, Yeah, 67% versus 81. The broadsword looked a little bit weak at, uh, a little time ago, but the back turrets are just continuously pounding on, and Gimless front crams are not really in range. Those missed also. We're, pr we're looking pretty strong from, from the back here. It indeed looks like the Gimla is probably not going to win this, which would land the Project Brodo Sword in the winner's bracket. If it wins this battle. Very interesting indeed. Oh, almost looked like that mortar hit somehow. Here we have a cram shot that is... That's a decoy cram, I believe, because that was easily taken out. Or, our crams are just so damaged by now. <laughs> now that this um, pack turret is still somehow online. Wow, the Project Broadsword is really providing some good continuous frag damage firepower there. Frag damage is pure and strong. Can definitely be relied upon. A very good bulky design. Most of the crams are detonated in an area where it doesn't matter so much. And this back array of turret is absolutely saving the day. For the broadsword, or destroying the day for the Gimle. She's a very sad ship at this point. But it is a fair and strong fight. Look at it. We don't have a golden hole to sit in. We, um, we, we have the roof though, that's something. And now we're just shooting at useless blocks. Sixty versus seventy-six percentages. I will be very surprised if the Gimla manages to win the second round. But you'd be surprised. We have a AI system, some stuff. So it is, of course, possible it gets hit. Oh, <clears throat> now we got the mortars popping down there. Not that they deal that much damage, but they're dealing some damage. We have a fire, however, now on the system here. So I want to keep track on this fire because it can, it can happen. Oh, it's safe. It can happen that if that AI box started to burning, Things could have changed very quickly. Wishful thinking, I know, but that's the only thing I can hold on to by now because the Gimle sure ain't much to hold on to. Look at that thing getting shredded by cram as we speak. Every second, new health is gone. Wow. Really powerful. We're aiming for the superstructure here. Okay. One of the last cram shots that we we're able to land properly. That's a pretty good hit though. 
The Project Broadsword's engines are slowing down. Gimli's at 55.9 percentages. It would be absolutely insane if, it, if this doesn't lose. Of course it's gonna lose, but... Anything can happen with cram shells. Wishful thinking, I know. But now we are officially below 55 percentages, which means that the Gimle lost both two first rounds. Which indeed means very much congratulations to Project Broadsword. It will be picked up and slapped into the winner's folder. We're gonna watch a third battle, of course, just for fun, since I think you requested this. Here we are. D battle. Third round is back. The results will, of course, stand nonetheless. The Gimle did lose this battle, and the Project Broadsword, Broadsword won this battle. So, Scrabus, congratulations indeed. In any case, I will just want to take this initial terrifying blast to say huge thanks to the commissioned officers in the Army of Jimadism who are supporting us every month and Patreon. Most notably then, Admiral Scooby Rocks, Commodore Owen, Lieutenant Anto, Cravey, Powered by Greed and Vincent Veritas. And of course, all our cadets. Thanks a lot for supporting the channel every month, making this YouTube channel with its creative games a lot more plausible. And doable. In any case, also thanks to all of the YouTube members, uh, and you can probably thank yourself because you were probably able to see this video early, because I have given you early access to the videos if you are in the Ecclesiarchy of Jimodism. And if you feeling a bit eclectical and want to join the Ecclesiarchy of Jimodism, the join button is below this video. We have different tiers, they have fun names. Anyways, this battle, it seems that the Project Broadsword is doing an extra good performance. It's so much moving behind. The Gimla has so little chance of just shooting most of its guns. I just want to see how it goes for this particular shell. Oh. Did it shoot anything important? It didn't. But it could have. It could have shot off a turret, which is the fun thing with that. Something seriously took a lot of <coughs> damage there. What happened? Cramps are coming in. Yeah, the broadsword is getting a real nice angle today. The Giml is having such a hard time dealing with it when it's... Uh... Now, now the broadsword is really on its uh, A game. That's very nice. Nice to see. Ooh, and we're shedding turrets. Like... Like skin. We'll have a kind of a thin layer on the outside, so that makes a lot of sense. Man, and it's targeting the cram cannons back here. Look at that. That's so, so good for the broadsword. Because now it really can deal so little damage. This is probably going to be the hardest win so far. Bam. Oh. Crams can still hurt. But look at that. Yeah, I think this is going to be the strongest win so far indeed. But anyways, this is pretty fun to see because now we can actually see one of the few examples where a APS based ship is able to hands down beat a cram based ship. Of course, Scrabus, I do know that he, I do think that he knew when he was building this about how the armor of the Gimla looked like. So we went for pure frag, and that's of course an excellent counter. 
Look at that, we're having explosions in the backside of the game. This is gonna mean fires from all those fuel tanks getting destroyed. Pretty big fires at that, because many of the fuel engines are back there. And now not something interesting is happening. The broadsword is coming up on Gimles' left side. Which is very interesting indeed. Wonder if the lasers have a juice left in them. 65% chance. It's staying behind here. So we're gonna see if the turrets, if the cram turrets and stuff will start shooting at it now. Or if it's just gonna die before that, because look at all that fire. Gimla has basically no armor at this side, so you can see it's just melting through instantly. Wow. That's some insane damage. And that's, this cram cannon is looking pretty healthy, but it's actually very unhealthy, and now it's even completely dead. Look at that. I do wonder. Do we have a dead AI? No, I don't think so. But we have pretty dead turrets. The Arcubalista Invictus are fighting hard to not die. But of course, we are so chanceless. This is funny though. Bam! Oh, look at that! It sniped that propeller off. Lucky, but um, not that it's gonna change much. Most ships have something important underwater, which means that the Arcobalista Invictus will do a lot of damage. But ships that don't have a lot of important things underwater, well, the Arcobalista is mostly dead weight for the game in those cases. And the game lays below 55 percentages and despawning rapidly. Look at that, we had some explosions. Wow. And there we have it. The third little battle we could take a little look at, so hopefully that was pretty interesting. And if it was, you should definitely leave a like. You know how to support us in the links in the description if you would like to do that. Otherwise, you should definitely just subscribe to the channel so you can stay tuned for the next weekly Gimla battle. If you want some relaxing content, check in the content down below and you'll, fi you'll find Relaxism, our relaxing channel with some relaxing gameplay. In any case, this is your host, Jim Odesma. We are signing out.